How can I tell if a stock is overvalued? In the past, I would simply compare the current share price to the current earnings of a company, but that doesn't really paint the full picture because if there is real growth on the horizon for this company, then maybe it makes sense for me to pay a slightly higher price now. On the other hand, if a company is in real trouble, probably wanna stay away despite a discounted share price. By knowing the difference between these two scenarios, I'll be able to accelerate my returns much faster and achieve financial independence decades sooner. Even though there is no crystal ball method, unless you're a politician or something, there are several ways that you can approximate the intrinsic value of a company. I'm gonna go over my favorite way, how it works, how to make it in Excel, and then of course, if you wanna just use mine instead of building your own, there's a link in the description where you can download it for free. There are only two ways that buying a company's stock will make me money. Either the stock pays me cash, commonly in the form of a dividend, or I'll be able to sell that stock for more than what I bought it for, known as growth. Dividends plus growth. When I look at a company's financials, not only do I wanna see the revenue growing, I want to see them spending more and more of that revenue on things like dividends, reinvesting in the company, or paying off debt. I wanna see them spending that revenue on things that it's gonna return me value. If a company can't do that, then a growing revenue stream doesn't really mean much to me, the investor. Money spent on growth might look like research and development, expanding into additional markets, employee development, marketing, improving your customer experience, et cetera. There's a million things that a company can do to contribute to its growth to contribute to getting more revenue in the future. Even raising the dividend or performing share buybacks can contribute to raising a company's share price by returning more value to investors. So that's the chunk of money that I really wanna analyze. How much is a company actually spending on dividends and growth, and how much are they able to grow that chunk of money in the future to grow even more and pay me out even more? When I buy a single share of stock, what percentage of that share price is being spent on operating expenses, administration expenses, interest on debt, versus what chunk of that share price is actually being spent on growth and dividends. The higher a percentage is being spent on growth, the better for me. That is the margin that I'm wanting to see grow higher. The best single financial metric that represents this chunk of money is called, not profit, free cash flow. The reason profit doesn't work is because a company's profits are reduced by non-cash expenses. On paper, they're able to deduct things like depreciation, amortization, unrealized gains, losses, etc. These are all non-cash expenses and they don't actually reduce the amount of cash that a company has on hand to invest in growth or returning value to shareholders. The discounted future free cash flow model works on the premise that money received today is worth more than money received later. For instance, if I have $100 today, then I can make interest on that money, and then in one year, it might be worth $105. By that logic, receiving $105 in a year is worth roughly the same amount as receiving $100 today. Let's do a concrete example. I have a food truck, and I expect I will make money for the next three years. If I was gonna approximate the value of my food truck using the discounted future free cash flow model, the first step would be to approximate my cash flow over the next three years. Here we can see in year one, I'm expecting $100, then $120, and then $150. My total cash flow that I'm gonna make over the life of the food truck is 370 bucks. Next, I will choose a discount rate, let's say 10%. This represents the risk that I might not receive the money that I think I will, and it represents the time value of money. Next, I would discount each cash flow by the discount rate over the amount of time that it takes to receive that cash flow. So the first year, $100 is discounted down to $91 roughly. $120 discounted over two years is worth $99. And then $150 discounted for three years at 10% is now worth $112.70. If we sum all of those discounted cash flows, then that value, $302.78 represents the fair value of my food truck today if I was gonna sell it. Even though the sum of the, of the real cash flows is 370, if I was gonna buy that food truck, I would want it to be discounted. This method takes into account that one, money in the future is gonna be worth less than money received today, 
two, there is a risk involved in future earnings, and three, the total value is based on the cash the business is expected to generate. This was a simplified example. Most businesses intend to make profit for longer than three years, but the main principles remain the same. So let's get into the real spreadsheet where we analyze the real businesses. There are five steps to using this spreadsheet to calculate the intrinsic value of a company. On my discounted future free cash flow spreadsheet, the first step is to determine the next five years of free cash flow for a company. There are three ways that I go about doing this. First, I can look at past performance. By pulling up the cash flow statement of the financial documents of a company, I can see what are the previous years free cash flow, and then I can extrapolate whatever the growth was in free cash flow for the previous five years. I can extrapolate that same growth for the next five years. Now, this strategy will not work well if a company is undergoing major changes. It will only work for very mature and constant growth companies. So for instance, if I wanted to look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA has had massive revenue growth last year due to selling tons of chips for data centers. This growth may or may not be sustained, so it's hard to say if a 46% revenue growth is gonna be consistent year over year for the next five years. So maybe for NVIDIA, I would not use past performance. My second method for projecting the next five years of free cash flow is by using analyst projections. Fortunately, analysts do not typically directly project the free cash flow over the next five years, but they do project revenue. So I can combine that projection with the past performance of free cash flow margin. The free cash flow margin is the percentage of revenue that is free cash flow. So I can see their margin trend. I can apply the average margin to the analyst's future revenue predictions and kind of indirectly get an analyst projected free cash flow growth over the next five years. The third way that I like to project the next five years is using my own projection. And this is more of an exploratory projection. I will kind of play with the numbers of free cash flow margin and annualized revenue growth to see what kind of possibilities there are. For instance, over the last five years, Nvidia had a free cash flow growth of 44.6%. I might wanna see what stock price will result if their free cash flow growth is only 15% or maybe if it's 50% year over year. I can use this to see what stock prices make sense in different scenarios. The second step of the spreadsheet is to determine the perpetual growth rate. Finally, we differ a little bit from the simple example we did before with the food truck. The perpetual growth rate is kind of like inflation. What rate is the economy gonna grow or what rate is the industry or sector going to grow that your company is in? Perpetual growth rate is exactly how it sounds. It's the rate of growth for that company going into infinity. And we can't select a perpetual growth rate higher than inflation because it wouldn't make sense for our company to grow faster than the whole economy forever. Like eventually the economy would be dwarfed by the one company. So that wouldn't really make sense. We choose that perpetual growth rate to match inflation. Or in other words, in, to match the growth rate of the economy and then our investment return actually comes from step three, determining our discount rate. The discount rate is the return that you would expect to receive over time. This takes into account the time value of money, as well as the risk level of the particular investment that you are in. There are many ways to come up with this number. One popular method is to use the weighted average cost of capital, which is the average rate that a business pays to finance its assets. I like to use this figure because it's easy to just look it up. So if I'm using NVIDIA, I can just type in NVIDIA WACC, and in this case, it's about 10%. I'll go with that number. Or if you're wanting to pick a return that you want to receive, maybe you're comfortable with a 7% return, then you can put 7% in for that figure. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. Step four is to calculate the terminal value. And this is another change from our simple food truck example from earlier. The terminal value refers to all of the future free cash flow after our projection period. 
So you might've been wondering why we only projected five years out. Like, is this company just gonna disappear after five years? Well, no, it's just that trying to project exact cash flows after five years gets really difficult. I mean, there's just no way to be accurate after five years. So from six years and on, we're just gonna go with the terminal value, which assumes constant inflation at 3%, that's our perpetual growth rate. It also assumes the constant discount rate into perpetuity. If that's the case, then this terminal value would be the sum of all of those cash flows from year six to year infinity. The spreadsheet automatically calculates the terminal value if the next five years of free cash flow are entered, the perpetual growth rate is in there, and the discount rate is in there. So let's go to the spreadsheet and see how this terminal value is actually calculated in step four. So remember, we've got three different terminal values that we're calculating. It's just three different methods of doing the same thing. I'll stick to method one for this quick demonstration. So using that equation that I pulled up earlier, that equation is pretty much in Excel format. We just have to switch out the variables for a cell in the spreadsheet. So free cash flow, that is substituted for the 2028 free cash flow in method one. That is the cash flow that we are increasing into infinity by 3%. That's the last one that we calculated. So the company is growing from that point. So free cash flow in this case gets substituted with 152,288. And remember that's in millions. So that's actually 152 billion. And then the G, that is our perpetual growth rate. So every time G appears in the equation, you substitute it with 3%. And then the WACC, that is the weighted average cost of capital. That is our discount rate. So everywhere that WACC appears, you just substitute it with 9.76%. Finally, step five is calculating the fair value of the company. Most of this will be taken care of automatically by Excel, but there are a few numbers that I have to enter in manually. It's just more difficult to scrape from the web. First, I have to enter in the number of shares outstanding, and I have to enter in the minority interest in the company. These will come into play later. Now that we have entered those numbers, we can start discounting our future cash flows. So the discounted future free cash flow for 2024 is calculated to be 35,069. And that is discounted from what we predicted for 2024, which is 38,491. And for this, I'm sticking with the method one using past performance. So just like the food truck example, if it's one year out, we want to discount it by 10% once. If it's two years out, we want to discount it by 10% twice and so on. So for the food truck, we only did three years of cash flows discounted. In this case, we're doing five years. So for this equation, for discounting a cash flow, for the CF, you put in the cash flow that you want to discount. So for this first one, I would plug in 38,491. And then for the DR, I put in the discount rate. That would be 10%. So one plus 10% is 1.1. And then the T in the exponent, that is the time in years. So for this first discounted cash flow, I would plug in a one for that T. For this one right here, I would plug in the corresponding free cash flow for 2025, I would still use the same discount rate. So it'd still have 1.1. And then for the, the T in the exponent, I would now put a two for 2026. I would put a three for 2027, a four and so on. So that is how we get our discounted future free cash flows that we predicted. Now we have to discount the terminal value. This uses the exact same equation, except for the free cash flow in the numerator, you're putting in the corresponding terminal value that we calculated in step four. So you stick the terminal value in, you still use the same discount rate, and then for the T, you now put a five because those are all of the, the future cash flows summed together in the terminal value after year five. So we're gonna discount the terminal value by five years. Once we've done that, we have all of the future free cash flow of NVIDIA discounted. Now, in order to calculate the enterprise value, we simply add all of those future free cash flows together. So in this case, this whole row right here, thumbed together equals 1,764,614. 
Now remember, these numbers are reduced by million. So in this case, it's actually 1.7 trillion. Now this isn't NVIDIA's total value that we want to calculate. They still have cash and cash equivalents on hand that counts for them. So we wanna add 31,438 to this value. And then we also wanna subtract out their current debt and we wanna subtract out their current minority interest. So after doing those things, the equity value is just a little bit higher, 1,785,000 or 1,785,000,000. That is the equity value of NVIDIA. And now the only thing left is to divide that equity value by the number of shares outstanding, which is also in millions, by the way. And we get our intrinsic value for NVIDIA using the past performance. So if NVIDIA has the next five years of growth mirror the previous five years of growth, and then they continue to grow by inflation into infinity, then according to the discounted free cash flow model, they would be worth $73 per share. Please remember that the intrinsic value calculated by this model is built on big assumptions, namely the projected future free cash flow. First of all, the projections used in this video could be improved quite a bit. I could have done a lot more due diligence. But second of all, and most importantly, Companies undergo massive changes from time to time that are impossible to anticipate. And when that happens, previous projections can just be thrown out the window. That is why I like to use a margin of safety before I go out and buy a stock based on the prediction of the model. I'll do anything between 10 and 25%, depending on my perceived level of risk with that investment or the volatility of that stock. If the model says $100 per share, I might only buy it for 75. That way my downside is limited. And if my projection is correct, then I just got an extra 25%. So the best I can do is update my projections as soon as new information comes out. And that is why I'm so glad I took the extra time to automate my spreadsheet. If I had to manually enter in all the financials every quarter, every time a major change occurred within a company, I would just not do it. So if you're interested in quickly evaluating the intrinsic value of companies, please feel free to download my spreadsheet. It's in the description, you can have it for free. However, you will not be able to evaluate ETFs. If you're interested in my method to evaluate ETFs that outperform the S&P 500, check out this video right here. Catch you on the flip side.